Hello and welcome to Take This TV, the television book club podcast where each week we watch an episode or two of our favorite shows and we talk about them with our friends in the fandom. That is you. Hello. So this season we're talking about Constellation and I'm joined as always by the wonderful Kimberly Woods. Hello. Hey, hey, hot potatoes. Uh, Today we are on episode six of Constellation and it's called Paul is Dead. Magnus worries that Alice is living in a fantasy world. Mm. Short and sweet. (laughs) (laughs) Um, The funny thing is when we were talking about this episode title, Paul is Dead, um, we discovered that it was based on this sort of like, you know, is is Paul McCartney of the Beatles dead sort of conspiracy theory that happened that people were wondering about. Um, There's deep lore behind it, yeah. (laughs) So, yeah, that's pretty interesting. Um, But for this episode, we start out seeing Paul um, up there in space. And uh, we see Joe's body get sucked. Oh, um, my gosh. It's gnarly. (laughs) It's horrible. Hit the glass and bleeding. It's like that scene from, what is it, Alien 3? When the the Queen Xenomorph gets sucked through the hole in the spaceship? Spoilers for Alien 3. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, it was pretty intense. Um, but yes, so we, we see Paul, we see Joe. Get but Joe's killed. in a different spot than Paul was when Paul died, so that was interesting. And there's also different damage to the space station mm-hmm. from what we saw from Joe's perspective in the pilot. It seemed like a little bitty hole, a little piece of space debris had hit it. But then, after we like cut away from the you know ISS, we see a cosmonaut. Just like floating away. So maybe the cosmonaut hit, but just in a different spot in the scenario? I don't know. We we also don't get to see their face, but we assume it's the same cosmonaut, but we don't know. <laughs> I don't know anything. I don't know anything. <laughs> um, the kind of wild thing was we learned that this is the Paul that we know that is was working on the Cal experiment, but suddenly now, after the entanglement or after the you know collision happened here, um, he is now in a universe where the Cal experiment doesn't exist, and his fellow astronauts have no idea what he's talking about when he brings up this experiment. Oh, it's so subtle. I love it. That's one of the things I love <laughs> the most about the show is that it doesn't over-explain things to you. Uh, we were watching it together, and I didn't even really pick up on it the first time, but uh, the other astronauts are leaving, Paul's staying behind, just like Joe did, and they're asking, "What would you would you like us to pass on a message for anything? And he's like, tell Henry the Cal experiment. Uh, I lost it and, and all this kind of stuff. And they're like, what are you talking about? Who's Henry? What's the Cal experiment? Um, <laughs> and yeah, it's it's such a such a perfect little detail to just like let you know that something's not right. Um, and then we're also getting, instead of, you know, when we started out, we had Joe kind of being left alone with Paul's body and wondering if Paul's still breathing, seeing the little um, shroud, like, come in and out, listening. And now we have Paul doing that for Joe. Um, we were just discussing right after, and Carmen saw the breathing. I saw some breathing, and then I also saw blood on the shroud, so I don't know what was going on with me. Um, maybe they were both there. I don't know. And this show does a good job of, like, making you think that you saw one thing, and then you really saw something else, or making you think one thing is true, and then something else is true, so it, it keeps you guessing. And it definitely, like, our, our Joe had seen, I think, um, Paul have some blood come on his uh, shroud, but this Paul is worried about Joe bleeding out on the trip down, so he's concerned about what to do with the body. Um, I, see, I I read that as like because Joe's corpse is in the sh- in the ship with him in the little escape pod. He's doing the same thing Joe had to do with replacing the batteries, and then he hears her like they confirmed that she was dead, and then he hears her breathing, and he even has the recording that he does and it catches her breathing, and so he's really freaked out because he's like, why is this corpse breathing? Um, and then he calls Houston, and they ask him what's going on. And he says, what's our protocol for dealing with dead bodies? And they ask, why is he concerned and he lies? Mm-hmm. And he's like, oh, because she's so injured that there'll be like profuse bleeding or whatever on re-entry. Um, but I, I really think it was because he was scared because Joe's breathing again after she's been dead. 
Which, yeah. like, <laughs> I would be so freaked out, too. Especially, like, alone on a space station yeah. with, like, this reanimated corpse. <laughs> it's like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> I'm in a horror movie, yeah. And then later on in the episode, he, do, he, he does kind of admit that, that he was scared that maybe she was still alive or something like that. Um, yeah, so he's definitely faced with the guilt of leaving his fellow astronaut up there in space and dealing with that. Yeah, so he, he's like moving her body back into the ISS uh, to leave her there, and then we get the scene where he's holding her hand, and just like from Joe's perspective, we saw Paul, now we see Joe from Paul's perspective. Um, and when he's trying to uh, launch from the space station to get back to Earth, the same thing happens, and the clamps are jammed, and he needs someone in the space station to press a button to release the clamps, and someone does it. And we, we get a shot like showing a shadow moving towards the button. Um, and then as Paul is launching, we see someone's silhouette in the space station. And he even tries to call out to the space station, but no one responds. Mm -hmm. What did you think about that? That's crazy. It's like, <laughs> is it Joe? Is it Joe helping him out? I don't know. Do you think there's a third Joe? Like a, like a third? Oh my gosh. Person? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I, I mean, don't know. I don't know. Are they just entangled enough? Like, are the two Joes entangled enough in the moment that she can help? Maybe the other one comes through somehow. And press. I had a theory that, like, because in the in Joe's version, she took Paul with her, and so I was like, okay, because she took Paul with her, going off the whole Schrodinger's thing, she perceived that Paul is dead. Everybody perceives Paul's dead, so Paul's dead. But because he left Joe on the space station. I was like, is that why our Joe is still alive? Because, Maybe. like, nobody knows if she's... So she's essentially the cat because yeah. she's in the space station. Um, Nobody's observing her. Yeah. And, and like, he doesn't know. He hasn't decided in his mind. Like, he's still kind of questioning. Like, Yeah, is she alive or yeah. not? And we, we... In the other episode, they talked about entanglement and how what, what happens to one uh, um, state of matter happens to the other. And it's like, because the other Joe is still alive is... Is that keeping this Joe, this Joe alive? Maybe. And like, maybe this like zombie Joe pressed the button to yeah. let Paul go. I don't know. So I don't know. Paul's hand pressed the button for Joe. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what's happening. I don't know. Yeah. Um, it was pretty cool this episode though because we got a lot of confirmation of the things that we were kind of suspecting. Um, we see that you know, as we said, this is not Paul's world. Um, he calls his wife. Frida, and instead her name is Erica, uh, and this... <laughs> She's the only person who has anything different about her in, in both universes, they get her name wrong, and I'm like, maybe she's trolling. What if, what if, at this point, I'm like, what is your it's name? Really funny, but that's yeah. the thing that's different. It's, uh, it's interesting, though, because it's like, we don't have much context for Paul and his family's relationship, so like... It's hard to judge what's different. He seems to be pretty mean to his daughter, and I'm like, okay, are you? Is it just because you're upset about what happened in space, or is this like how you were with your daughter in the other world? He's very aggressive like, with his yeah, daughter. Yeah, like, what is this relationship? But it's hard because we don't have anything to like judge it against. Yeah, <laughs> we we do get a lot of moments of him yelling at his daughter and telling her not to be a jerk to Alice. <laughs> <laughs> Um, we get to see Joe's red car in the oh, driveway when yeah. we go to her uh, wake. Um, we get to see those moments from this world. Um, for example, like when the other Alice is seeing the picture of her mom at the wake. We get this Alice and seeing the other Alice. Um, oh, yeah, the Alices yeah. perceive yeah. each other. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that was pretty cool. Um, we, we discovered that this Alice and her dad don't have as great of a relationship as the other Alice and dad. Um, she's very much a mama's girl who's missing her mother, doesn't want to rely on her dad. Her dad is in over, you know. <laughs> to, to her credit, though, Magnus is, like, so not prepared to be a single dad. He, like, has a full-on breakdown at one point in the episode. <laughs> Just, like, can't handle it. There's the one part also where like they're going to the cabin and Alice is like we're gonna walk and she like gets out of the car and starts walking away and I was just like 
I could never do that as a kid. I would have yeah. I would have called three different kinds of a whooping if I oh, did yeah. that as a kid. He's just like, open the door, open the trunk, get my stuff out, and I'm going. I'm leaving. And he's just standing there watching her. And like, hey, Magnus, you going to go? Or just, you know. And then sure enough, they walk to the cabin. I do love that this Alice is like, yes, let's drive across the frozen lake. Like, Come on. It's what we do. And, yeah, she's you like, know, Joe. our other Joe, yeah, Joe is like, we're going to drive across the frozen lake. And other Alice in that world is like, Mom, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> like, that's the thing, you know, for them. Didn't you say before that the actors who are playing Alice are twins? Mm -hmm. I feel like I can't tell the difference. Are, are they, like, are, are the two Alices, are they, what am I trying to say? Are they both playing Alice or are they both or is one of them one version of Alice and one of the other? I don't other? know. I'd like to know that, too. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder if they have scenes together. Because I know sometimes they do it anyway for kids because they they can only have shorter days on set. Mm -hmm. And so they, you know, can give them breaks more often. But it would be interesting to know, like, are they keeping them a particular Alice? Yeah. Let us I know. I can't really tell. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty cool. Um, what else do we see here oh there oh. was the moment when uh alice is hiding in the cupboard for the first time and we see her kicking the wall mm -hmm. and is making that thumping sound and that is the sound that we hear the thumping we hear when joe first sees the like cupboard and like is tra teleported to the hallway and so now we kind of see that like the, these incursions or these like events that are happening are um essentially moments where people are kind of uh what do they call it in the last episode the, when they're the like isolate the liminal space yeah. Yeah. yes they're in the liminal yeah. space yeah so maybe this cabinet's the liminal space too maybe what were you gonna say um i was remembering that we we get to see this alice hearing the piano coming from the other world of her mom playing and looking to the spot where in this world, you know, there is no piano. I think there's like a record player on a table or something. Um, but where the piano would be. So I thought that was really cool. Yeah, that, that was a great over. moment. Yeah. It, did it feel like to you that the um, liminal spaces were like kind of happening more frequently in this? Maybe it was because we were kind of getting like a, a highlight reel of all the liminal space moments. Yeah. Where... Yeah. I was trying to like flag, okay, what are the liminal space moments? Obviously space, the cabinets, like their their home and then the ca the cabin home the one that threw me was like <laughs> the scene when alice is kind of walking into the parking garage or whatever yeah. and she sees henry oh uh, yeah and then when she like throws the rabbit down yeah i was like why is that a little space well was that i'm trying to remember if that was shortly when like henry was testing his cal experiment and joe was in there right because yeah, so joe was, didn't like, touch it. it yeah, yeah. okay that makes sense. But the fact that this other like cabin, you know, house in the woods or whatever is across a lake reminds me of when they went on the boat like miles out across the, you know. So it seems to also be like a liminal space. Yeah. Yeah. We get the big confrontation with uh <laughs> well, Paul. Paul uh, going for a walk <laughs> across the world. <laughs> <laughs> Paul's wife, Erica, wakes up and it's like, oh, he's gone. He said he went out for air. And then we see him in L.A. And it's not clear if, like, because they were at the funeral and then we see them in a hotel. So it's not clear if they're, like, yeah. still in uh, Germany or whatever, if they're or Russia or whatever, or if they're back at home. And so, I also just say it was really weird, the woman from, I don't know if she was from NASA or if she was from the European, no, maybe the European Space Agency, who came and was talking to Erica about, like, you know, he needs to enter this program. Oh, yeah, she's from he NASA. He needs to get help. Yeah. Um, and, you know, he won't be coming back or something. She's she's like, like, he has to go away. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, what? Okay. <laughs> it, well, I mean, that also kind of, like, feeds the theory of, like, are all of these organizations trying to silence the astronauts because they know more than they're letting on? Um, it seems like it. Um, because, again, this, this Paul got questioned... Um, about his time up in space and was obviously giving some very weird answers about the Cal experiment and uh, Henry Caldero. Was that his name? Caldero? Caldero? Caldero. Something like that, yeah. Um, yeah, so it seems like it. <laughs> so Paul goes to find Henry and get some answers. 
Uh, Paul's just being hyper aggressive <laughs> the whole episode. <laughs> he keeps calling him Henry. He's like Henry, Henry, <laughs> Commander uh, Henry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and Bud is just like, "What are you doing? Please stop calling me that. I can't help you." Um, we get to see a glimpse of Bud's apartment, which has newspaper articles strewn about about you know the disaster of the Apollo eighteen um, and his failure. Just you know, up there reminding him. Did you, so in that moment, I was like, does Bud actually know all the things that we know that he is aware of? Mm -hmm. Or is this sort of the moment where he finds out about everything? It seemed like this might be the moment that he finds out. Yeah. Originally, I was thinking like, oh, he's become this drunk, bitter person because he knew the whole time. But he genuinely seemed surprised. Yeah, um, he did. By the fact that, you know. Maybe there's a successful, yeah. Maybe this Which is. I gonna... thought it was interesting. I wasn't expecting that. I thought he kind of knew for a while. It seemed way that, that way, been... but I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that was interesting. Um, things but... did escalate. <laughs> things escalated. They didn't calm down at all. They didn't really talk. They kept talking past each other, and um, ultimately, Bud pulls out a gun, um, fires, and we don't see. Yeah, the testosterone took over. And... Yeah. I mean, hopefully Paul uh, is not like the title and Paul <laughs> of this episode, which says Paul is dead. Hopefully Paul isn't dead. Um, and he just shot at the wall. Really? I, honestly, I don't know. I feel like I don't know what else would happen if Paul wasn't dead, but I'm like, maybe he is dead. I mean, I don't know, because we have this question again, too, where it's like, you know... Uh, Joe saw him dead, or thought she saw him dead. Does that mean he's dead? But then she sees him on the other side alive, so I don't know. Maybe that... Yeah. Oh, one thing that we talked about before we started recording is that, like, um, based on the stuff that we see with Paul and the Cal experiment and all that, we have a new theory that Paul and Joe are the ones that are entangled with each other, and not that they're entangled with their counterparts, and so they essentially swapped universes. So, um, Paul is now in, in our Joe's universe and vice versa. Um, and that's why Joe doesn't know anything about the Cal experiment. And Paul is talking about the Cal experiment. And everybody is like, what are you talking about? That was canceled 12 years ago. Um, so, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, that seems to be the prevailing theory at the moment. But we'll see. What but happens. I still think there has to be some sort of entanglement between themselves. Because how are they communicating? Like, like Bud and Henry last time, the ability to like oh, yeah. affect one another. So I think there's like multiple layers of it. Maybe. Some, I don't know. I don't, truly I don't know don't how know. to explain it. But <laughs> <laughs> there might be a lot of tangles going on. Um, the other thing we get to see is that this Alice seems certain that she's going to see her mom again. Um, She's hearing, you know, the piano. She's getting a sense that her, her actual mother is out there. Um, you know, she says, we'll see her again one day, I promise. To mm. which we get, you know, Magnus being like, no, no, you won't. I, lo I thought it was so funny <laughs> no, in that scene. Where like, so we learned that the picture that we thought was like a, a troll was actually a changeling, Alice says. And so she says, that I promise we'll see mom again. And, and Magnus is like holding her face, being like, oh, no she's dead we have to move on and like hugging her and then we get this moment of alice like in her best palpatine impression just like looking up at the changeling painting and i'm like yes alice choose the dark side like give in to your hatred <laughs> <laughs> just like evil alice but yeah i'm excited uh, to see what happens me too um at the end of the episode it ends with um alice waking up in the middle of the night, Dad's asleep. She goes to the window, looks out, and sees um, a car pull up, and it has, you know, her her mom in it, and you know, the other Alice <gasps> inside. So she's seeing into that other universe. Oh man! Can't wait to see what happens next. Yeah, I'm excited. <laughs> yeah. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. We're at Take This TV on Instagram and TikTok. Leave us a comment, write us a review, let us know what you think. Um, thanks for watching. Welcome to the club. And remember, it's, it's dangerous, dangerous to watch, watch TV, TV alone. alone.